Since it won't stop raining lately here in Texas, I figured today we'd go ahead and take a quick look at my current bike lineup. I currently have eight bikes in my possession, and I'm clearly pushing the reasonable limits of N plus one. So let's go through these one by one, and I'll give a quick update on each bike. We'll start things off with my full suspension bike, and this is a 2020 Nuke Proof Reactor 290 Alloy Custom Build. I bought this in May of 2020, and it's a good thing I did because shortly after, bikes were just sold out everywhere, and that still seems to be the case. I ended up doing a custom build because the shop I ordered the bike through did not have any of the complete builds for the reactor. I did countless hours of research on this bike and knew this was the full suspension trail bike I was looking for. I went with the nicest suspension possible and then loaded this bike up with mid-range components to help keep the price down. If you do want the full detailed specs of this bike, I've already filmed a review on it, so you can definitely check that out after this video. Recent additions to this bike include a brand new front tire. This is the Kenda Hellcat. I haven't even ridden on it yet. And I've also converted full time to clipless pedals. And I have these really eye-catching pink Issy Trail 3 pedals. Those pedals normally retail for $125. I got the pink ones because they were on sale for $30. I truly love this bike, but truthfully, I don't get to ride it that much anymore. This bike is mostly used for when I ride out of town or I'm doing something that I know is gonna hurt my back. And as I'm getting older, I'm starting to realize that's just about everything. For my local trails, I just prefer to ride a hardtail, and unfortunately, this thing just kinda hangs out here at the house. As I have a goal to ride as many bikes as possible here on this channel, I'm gonna be posting this for sale later this year in hopes of getting a new full suspension bike. I don't have a replacement lined up for this bike, but I do like the travel range it's in, 140 up front, 130 out back. I may try and stick with that, or I might actually go with less travel. So hopefully come winter time, I'm able to get my hands on a new full suspension bike. But for the past year, this bike has been incredible. Next is my 2021 Salsa Timberjack XT 27.5 Plus Hardtail. That's kind of a mouthful. I got this bike in May of 2021, and due to other video projects and obligations, I've actually only ridden this about two to three times. I'm pretty much a 29 inch fanboy at this point, but I did want a 27.5 plus hardtail that could also accept 29 inch wheels. The Timberjack really fit that build nicely, and I also wanted it for the adjustable dropouts so I could experiment with different chainstay lengths as I swap out the wheel sizes. I already released a video going over all the specs of this bike, and since then, I've just upgraded the tires to some lighter Kenda tires, the Regolith Pro up front and the Booster Pro out back, both 27.5 by 2.8 inches wide, and this is personally my favorite light trail tire setup. I've also upgraded the brake rotors and pads, which I also filmed a video about. One of the biggest concerns I had with this bike was that it showed up with wheels that were not taped ready for tubeless conversion, for $2,100, I feel like it should come pre-taped already. This bike is really fun and snappy, and I look forward to riding it more as I catch up on other video projects. Oh look, another hardtail. This is my 2021 Marin San Quentin 1. This bike was sent to me by Marin in January 2021 for review, and I did end up purchasing it for a discount after I finished my review. Currently, this bike is being mostly used by my girlfriend, as she finds it more comfortable than her bike, which we'll talk about a little bit later. I bought this bike with the intention of it being a loaner bike for my friends or visitors who need to borrow a bike, and I also bought it for sentimental reasons. This was my first media review bike, and it really makes me feel like what I'm doing here on the channel is legitimate. I've put a lot of time and effort into this channel, so I was absolutely thrilled when a company like Marin said, yes, we like what you're doing, we would be happy to send you a bike for review. To me, this bike represents the embodiment of a dream come true. This isn't the greatest bike ever made, but when I look at it, I feel really happy and proud of how far this channel has come. Thank you, Marin, for this opportunity. I am eternally grateful. Speaking of review bikes, here's my next review bike, the Marin Elroy. I am beyond stoked that Marin sent this to me for review after my San Quentin review, because this is one of my dream hardtails. Look at it. Look at this thing. It's insane. This is a chromoly steel hardtail with a 63 degree head tube angle that you would typically find on a downhill bike. I'm currently riding this bike as much as possible, 
and filming to do a review on it, so I won't say much more about it right now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my review on this bike. This bike is rowdy, I'll leave it at that for now. And while we're on the subject of Marins, this is my Marin DSX-1 flat bar gravel bike. I swear I'm not sponsored or in cahoots with Marin. I bought this bike before Marin sent me any review bikes, and I searched for this thing for months. I think gravel bikes are really cool, and I ultimately decided that a flat bar version would suit me best. I use this thing for my urban commuting rides, and then I take it on the trails to challenge myself when I'm feeling a little dangerous. I bought this bike in December of 2020, and I almost didn't because it had a $160 shipping charge. Even though the shipping charge was really high, I am glad I bought this bike because I have not seen it in stock once since. This bike does have a lot of upgrades done to it, which I filmed a video about, and I felt comfortable doing so because the bike is pretty affordable. The only thing I've changed since filming that video is I've added these Deity Super Cush grips. They are far more comfortable than the grips I had on there before. And in six months of ownership, I still haven't pushed in the internal cable routing grommets for the dropper post. With all of the rain we've been having recently, I've ridden this bike a lot on paved trails, and it is honestly one of my favorite bikes I have. It's simple, reliable, affordable, fun, and it also reminds me of riding a vintage mountain bike on my local trails. If you can find this bike in stock, I highly recommend it. This bike actually showed up earlier today, and it's another media review bike. And it's not from Marin. This is the Rocky Mountain Growler 40. After reviewing the San Quentin, I reached out to Rocky Mountain in hopes of reviewing their budget-friendly Growler 20, which retails for $1,040. They didn't have any of the Growler 20s available to send me, but they did say they had the next model up, the Growler 40, and here it is. This bike retails around $1,700, and like I said, I just got it this morning, unboxed it, slapped it together, and pedaled it around my street just a little bit, so I can't really say much about it at this point. Even though this is a size medium and I typically ride a size large, pedaling it around on my street, this thing felt pretty good, and I'm really excited to see how it performs on my local trails. Thank you so much to Rocky Mountain for sending me this bike for review. I'm very excited to ride and film this bike. Really good looking bike. Next, we'll quickly look at another review bike that was sent to me, the Aerial Rider Ride Eel e-bike. I reached out to Aerial Rider to review the Grizzly, which is their all-wheel drive, dual suspension, 35 mile per hour rad machine, but they didn't have one available at the time. They did, however, have this bike available and offered to send it to me, and I said, yeah, I'll check it out. I honestly did not have high hopes for this bike, being a $1,000 electric commuting bike, but I gotta say, this thing really impressed me. This bike is incredibly fun and the perfect bike for a city commuter. I just released a full in-depth review on this bike, so if you do want to learn more about it, be sure to check that out. Aerial Rider is awesome, and they actually said I can keep this bike, which I can't thank them enough for. I didn't expect to get to keep this thing, and I'm thrilled because I really like it. Since I am hanging on to it, I've already ordered a couple upgrades that I think will make this bike a little bit cooler. I will be filming a video on those upgrades once those parts arrive. Thank you again to Aerial Rider. I really appreciate you guys sending me this bike. Okay, and saving the worst bike for last, this is a 2016 Trek Marlin 5. Jenna never learned to ride a bike as a kid, and she expressed interest in learning a couple years ago, but she only gave me a $200 budget to find her a bike. For 200 bucks, this bike is fine, but I would not recommend buying one of these brand new at full retail. The 2022 models of this bike still use a non-tapered head tube and go all the way up to $1,200. Even Walmart bikes are adopting tapered head tubes, but I digress. I personally believe that if you're spending $1,000 or more on a new mountain bike, there are a lot better options than the Trek Marlin. I did do a few parts bin upgrades to make this a little bit more comfortable and easy to ride for Jenna. I converted it to a 1x10 drivetrain system, different bar and stem combo, and some shorter reach brake levers. She's ridden this bike a handful of times, but she never really seemed that stoked on it. She did one ride on the San Quentin and immediately said, this bike feels so much better than mine. This bike won't be here much longer because I am going to post it for sale on Facebook Marketplace. Bye Trek Marlin. And that's my current bike fleet. I can't believe that I have this many bikes, but I'm super grateful that I do. I just absolutely love riding bikes and the joy that it brings to my life, and I love having a variety of bikes to ride. You might be saying to yourself, this is kind of a bizarre collection of bikes, 
And while I spend 95% of my time mountain biking, I do have a love for all things cycling. I'm definitely going to start thinning the herd to make room for other potential bikes, or just to have some extra space in that room. It's getting a bit out of control. I have to give you all a sincere thank you for watching these videos and giving me the opportunity to actually get these review bikes. It's literally a dream come true that anyone would want to send me anything, and I just think it is the coolest thing ever. I will always give you an honest review on this channel, and I'm not being paid for any of the reviews that I make. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my bikes today, and let me know down in the comments what you all are riding. Also, let me know which bikes of mine you want to see more videos on, or you want to learn more about. Don't forget to like this video and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next one, stay rowdy within reason.